Okay. <coughs> I thought I will show you guys. <coughs> I show you guys the normal time lapse to make this make the bot as. I know you guys like those time lapses. Everyone likes time lapses, isn't it? But it turned out that my phone's camera, I mean not the camera, my phone is a piece of shit. For some reason, I used to record my time lapses using a pro application which actually uh, captures some images in equal intervals and later on I just place those images in sequence to create a time lapse. Using those, you can create a time lapse which is of higher quality and also <coughs> it can modify certain things but for some reason my smartphone didn't write those pictures correctly and some of those pictures have bad pixels I mean I don't know what they are because I cannot even show you in Premiere because Premiere cannot render those files and that's why I have to stick to some classical way of telling you how I made this bot let's get started So the first thing obviously I should I want to give you a brief overview before going to the actual build okay so it's been a while now while I was struggling with my previous bot I made this CAD model it's just a prototype I made using some genuine Polulu parts we have the Polulu motors with the wheel we have a QTR 8A genuine Polulu sensors, I mean, obviously those are some CAD models of the actual thing and by that I make I made a prototype and I also used two lithium ion batteries because I was pretty sure and I want to see whether it is possible to make a lighter and smaller bot because I know my previous bot was huge. So that's how it turned out like this, as you can see. The creation date is pretty earlier and when I designed that I never I mean I didn't took any help from internet and saw what the actual fast bots look like okay so I just designed it by myself I just took the QTR 8A and measured the dimensions and designed the bot according to that so it's like just fitting all those components barely will left some extra space so I just follow that rule and designed that bot and it's turned out to be pretty, I mean, well, it looks like some sort of carrier, but, but still, it looks like pretty cool, isn't it? So, I have that design in my mind, and also I told you guys that I came across Thakman bot, and also that Indonesian guy who made that bot, but obviously his bot will be much lighter, because he made the whole bot in PCB, which is not possible for me, because, well, I have to order some PCBs for that, because I also do not have any... You know heat gun type of stuff which I can use to shoulder SMD components so uh, for now it is a big, big buffer for me what it's a new word I guess I just want to stick with this so the first thing comes into mind is the chassis okay and this is what I found in my stock this thing is thick and also this thing is pretty strong I mean by strong I mean it is strong I cannot even cut it using my hacksaw properly. Later I have to chisel it out. It's so tough. And believe it or not, it is from an old UPS. If you remember, I show you my monster transformer, which I found from that UPS. That transformer actually resides on this mica. So you can guess, it, it has to be strong. And it is. So as you can see, this is the mica sh and I said sh what the f and I also just if you want to get a chassis you it has to be lighter stronger and also easy to cut and for me well it's not easy to cut but it is lighter I mean it's not so lighter as you can find some other mica materials but it is stronger which is my goal because I it has to be stronger because you have to work make a bunch of drills and there is a high chance that if you pick cheap mica sheets then it is a high chance that when you drill the holes the edges can break away and I took the micro, sh micro sheet and uh, started scribing some dimensions on it first of all I marked them with a pencil <coughs> and before that obviously I designed the layout in Photoshop because I was not having Fusion 360 in my PC there 
so I was designing the layout and figuring out the components figuring uh, measuring the length of the, my components and then just sticking them to the Photoshop to determine what should be the optimal length of the chassis because I don't need any extra bit of chassis left because that would increase the weight obviously I this is the point guys you have to be pinpoint accurate because any extra material will cause some imbalance also and also if you are dealing with high speed high speed balls then it will also increase the weight and as a balancing I will come to that point later on so after that I <coughs> figured out some dimensions and marked them with pencil in the mica sheet and then I started scribing <coughs> using a scriber because as you can see this mica sheet is tough and you cannot cut it using hacksaw so as you can see this is the final mica sheet I marked and these are the dimensions for you guys Let's take a screenshot if you want to make this After that, you have to cut it and to cut it, you need some power tools and for which one of my seniors in my college helped me a lot because they provided me the college mechanical lab to do that. Shout out to him. You just have to keep a Dremel or an angle grinder to cut this mic and obviously it depends upon your mic whether it is tough as sh and then I don't know how to tell you or not I mean obviously I should so but I will not recommend this idea to anyone who want to make this obviously you can try yourself and make it by my method but I never recommend this method to you guys okay never I hope you got it it's the wheels and I made the wheels using some PVC pipes laying around and for the inside core I used some wood and this is the wrong decision well obviously if you have a lathe in your hand and then you can carve some circles out of that wood and fit it in the inside of the PVC pipe and then it may work out but for me it was terrible this is the PVC fire pipe I used it is around okay it's one inch in outer diameter and 1.5 inch sorry 1.5 inch lot 0.75 inch <coughs> in inner diameter this is the pipe I used to make the covering of the wheels and it is a bad decision because you need a lathe to make the inner core because obviously you need a perfectly centered piece of wood which will go inside this and stick with the motor shaft and that is the most hard part I did it using some wood cut a circle out of it and grinded it down to a rough circle until this it was kind of okay then to smooth it out and make it a perfect circle I spin it in my drill bit so this is the contraption as you can see I just mounted these two wheels in one screw and attached it with the jam nut configuration as it will not rotate by itself and then I'll just pin it and sand the surface with this file sounds simple enough isn't it did you like the contraption please give this video a thumbs up if you did I cut my finger awesome piece of sh so as you can see it's healed by now so no issue but it could have been worse <coughs> so never try this I mean obviously you can make wheels from 3d printing I've shown that in my previous video so just go and watch that video here if you want to make wheels. I recommend that method.
not this one okay this is a dumb idea i mean i don't know whether uh, if i had a lathe i can pull this off but well the college authorities didn't give me the lathe to work with because they think i'm a f noob but what they don't know is i'm a noob well well i digress so i think this video is long so i will keep it simple as of now uh, now you have to just make all those motors and I mean all the place all those motors and motor controller drivers your main computer and the sensors that's all you are done I think the next part will be the last part of the, of the real video stay tuned till that and if you did like give it a thumbs up thumbs down for the opposite and if you haven't subscribed yet do that go ahead there is a red color subscribe button you have to just Every the smack that and press that bell uh, icon and set it to all to receive all of my notifications because I publish videos every week. Sometimes it will be like a uh, one week gap and then publish but generally I publish videos each Sunday. Make sure you hit that bell icon and hit all in there so you can receive all the notifications. So as of now this is Malari you are watching out of syllabus and for today I am signing off.